So as someone who's known him for the past 15 years, to be honest, marrying Trevor is a bit of a gamble. But then again, that's not something that Nomiras typically shy away from. Fast forward. <laughs> Fast forward 10 years and we find ourselves working together for the first time. And he's soon telling me all about this Emmy that he can't stop thinking about. And I've known any Emmy for more years than I can remember, mostly because people continuously get us mixed up. Um, and I like to think of myself as the fifth honorary Nomura sister. Um, I'm pretty sure that I am, but even though I just missed the cut for the wedding party, um, one moment that I do remember is Emmy was driving me out to a baseball game in I don't know where, uh, but we were singing our hearts out to a little Tim McGraw barbecue stain in the car, and she was telling me all about this Trevor person who I actually got the chance to know on a trip to Costa Rica in high school. And classic Richmond, two very different worlds colliding in front of my eyes. Uh, but soon enough, I'm no longer known as, oh, are you Emmy? It's just straight to, yep, you are Emmy. How's Trevor? <laughs> We've both known since the beginning that these two were meant to be. And I don't know about you punks, but I'm pretty excited for these two to start their journey to becoming parents. I mean, Emmy is beautiful, she's athletic, she's a teacher, and Trevor, well, he'll boost the hell out of that baby's social media engagement. <laughs> now I realize this is starting to come across as a bit of a roast, rather than a speech, and I really do want you to know that you've hit the jackpot in marrying him. He is the most committed person I know. He'll be there through the struggles, the losses, the defeat, but what else can you expect from a Cowboys fan? <laughs> okay, okay. Now that you've officially signed those papers, it's about time we find out how well these newlyweds actually know each other. Um, Caitlin and I both asked each of them five questions. And... Trevor and I have a shared love for a TV show called Friends. So we made a little lightning round. So here's how it works. There are five questions that each of them will have to answer as fast as they can correctly. And the winner actually gets a prize. All right, Emmy, bride goes first. What is Trevor's favorite drink? Neither. Wrong. <laughs> Vodka soda. What, what is something that Trevor could eat every day? We'll give it to you. I don't know, Gita, should we give it to her? It was curry chicken was the answer. We'll give it to her. Which celebrity would Trevor invite to the wedding if he could? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> baby, 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 ooh. What is... I, I feel like this is a question we all want to know the answer to. What is Trevor's most annoying habit? <laughs> Wrong. He's always right, which <laughs> was a little presumptuous if you ask me. <laughs> Last but not least, what would be Trevor's go-to karaoke song? No diggity. You got one. One out of five. <laughs> All right, Trevor, are you ready? I'm not going to lie. This might be tough. 
What's Emmy's favorite drink? Caesar. You got ding, it. Ding. We're, we're, we're tied, ladies and gentlemen. We're tied. <laughs> what could Emmy eat every day? Emmy, don't you be mouthing answers to him. <laughs> I do that to my students. <laughs> Wrong answer. It is chocolate. Okay, what celebrity would Emmy invite to the wedding? I'm not gonna lie, she changed her answer on this one. No, Emmy, do you even remember what your answer was? No. That was your initial, but you know what's funny? Emmy, that 100% was your first answer, and then you were like, wait, 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 I need to change it to Will Ferrell. Okay, now for the great question of, what is Emmy's most annoying habit? She leaves clean laundry for later on to fold. Is it too late to unsign these papers? I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> All right, last. But not least, I, I actually believe in you for this one. What is Emmy's go-to karaoke song? I believe she believes in you. Don't stop believing, Trevor. She believes in you. Don't stop believing by Journey. So it was a tie, which makes, I mean, Good sense, because... Rock, paper, scissors? No. Here's the deal. We have one gift. You two have to decide who gets it. Uh, so then, so then this, is the, this is what we do in my classroom. You gotta do rock, paper, scissors. One rock, round, paper, scissors. one game. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Because otherwise we get into arguments. So, ready. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Oh my god. Unagi! <laughs> Emmy! So, Emmy wins, but Emmy... Emmy has the choice. She can either take the gift for herself, or she can gift it to her new groom. That is so sweet. Cheers, Trevor. Oh, I stop, collaborate, and listen. I sit back with my brand new riches. Something grabs a hold of me tight and flow like a heart. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about all of you, but the, the speeches are one of my favorite parts of the wedding. You know, you get to, get to hear from, is it, were you guys going to say something like that? You, <laughs> uh, okay. No, I mean, you get to hear from a lot of the, or some of the people that are closest with Trevor and Emmy, you get to hear what they have to say, whether it's funny or heartfelt or even embarrassing. It's usually enjoyable. Um, and I'm glad that I get to go first. I actually requested it. So uh, for the sake of everybody speaking after me, I hope I don't put you all to sleep. Um, but the first thing that I would like to do while I'm up here is to ask you all in, uh, to raise a glass, which I forgot at my table. <laughs> to raise a glass to Trevor and Emmy. Uh, you guys look amazing. Emmy, you look absolutely beautiful. And Trevor, you look very handsome. And together, don't drink yet. 
<laughs> Together, you guys look happy. And when I say that, I don't just mean today. You know, each and every day, you guys look truly and genuinely happy. And that is a beautiful thing. So it has been a wonderful day. And I know it's going to be an exciting night. And I'm very much looking forward to it. So cheers. <clears throat> I had that planned as the first thing I was going to do in my speech because I didn't think I was going to have anything to drink yet, so I wanted to get a drink in, but I didn't realize that we were all going to get iced, so <laughs> that was a little curveball. Um, but the other reason why I planned to do that first is because that's why we're here, right? We're here to celebrate Trevor and Emmy. I look out into this crowd and I, I see just a room full of people that love those two up there. And some of the faces I recognize and surprisingly a lot that I don't. So <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, my name is Robbie, Trevor's best man. And I'm also, actually, Trevor, are we brothers? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. I am also Trevor's, believe it or not, older brother. <laughs> and that little back and forth was a, a reenactment from a movie, A Night at the Roxbury. Some of you may have figured that out by now. Um, but I, I knew Trevor was going to get that. He didn't, he didn't know I was going to do that, but I knew he would get it. And uh, my whole speech is actually predicated on him getting that. So... <laughs> Good job. Um, but I, I wanted to play that out because way back in the day, I got to explain it a little bit, way back in the day, like many, many years ago, Trevor and I were at the spa, you know, as brothers do. Um, and we, we walk into the spa and the, the girl behind the counter is checking us in or whatever they do at the spa. And uh, she, looks at, she looks up at us and she's like, are you guys brothers? And I was just like, yep. And then she was like, oh, okay, cool. And then she just left, and then Trevor and I were just standing there, and he looks at me, and he's like, dude, you just missed the perfect opportunity to play out that scene from A Night at the Roxbury. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, you're, you're totally right. <laughs> yeah, he made a big deal out of it, too. He was like, this is a, that was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Uh, and like I said, that was many, many years ago, and to this day, I have not been able to live that down. As a matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, Trevor messaged me, and he's like, hey, you remember that time at the spa? And I was like, yes, I, I remember that time. Um, and I was, gonna, I was planning on saying that little story before you messaged me that, so yes, I definitely do remember. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I tell that story for two reasons. And the first reason was to, or was in hopes of making up for that once in a lifetime missed opportunity. So hopefully I redeemed myself, which I think you said I did. Uh, but the other reason I tell that is to use it as a bit of a segue into who Trevor is as a person. But before I do that, there are a few groups of people that I know are, are close to this wedding and close to... Trevor and Emmy in general that I would like to acknowledge. Um, first, the wedding party. Ladies, you look stunning. And gentlemen, uh, you know, thanks for coming. <laughs> you guys look good. <laughs> um, it's, it's nothing but brothers and sisters and, and best friends up, up sitting up here at this table. So, you know, it's family, right? And just a great group of people. And I'm proud to say that after today, you are all a part of my family too. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, to Mark and Chris, the parents of the bride, over the last several years, I've had the, the opportunity to, to get to know you. And I can honestly say that I've Truly enjoyed every minute of it. You are both amazing people. You have raised four wonderful daughters who have 
brought four wonderful men and too many grandchildren to count <laughs> into this world and into your lives. And uh, I know that with Emmy being the baby of the family, that this one has to be a special one for you. So congratulations to you too. And to my mom, also Trevor's mom, because <laughs> we're brothers. And actually, uh, you know, our sister Chelsea and, and her husband, our brother Thomas, are also up here at, in, the, in the wedding party. Um, but so to our mom, I know that there is nothing more important to you in this world than our happiness. So... Um, and I know that because you show it to us each and every day. You are our favorite person. You are, without a doubt, your grandchildren's favorite person. <laughs> and uh, believe me when I say I know how important this day is to you. Um, you know, growing up, Chelsea and Thomas went to one high school and Trevor went to another high school and, and I went to another high school. So we all ran in different circles. But as the years go by, uh, each and every year that passes, we grow closer and closer, all of us as a family. And that makes me happy. So I, I, I really love that. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to our dad. I know he would like to be here. Uh, I could say a lot of things about him, but I think it would just really boil down to the fact that he was a, a one of a kind type of personality, you know, like a once in a, in a generation, if you will. And I think that phrase is, is accurate because he passed on those one of a kind traits onto Trevor. Uh, <laughs> But not quite there yet. I know the best man speech is supposed to be about, about the groom, and I'm almost there, but, but not quite. Um, Emmy, you know, I mentioned earlier how, as the years go, have gone by, we've all grown closer and closer, and naturally that includes you. Uh, you are one of the most kind-hearted people that I have ever met. You, there's a certain warmth and acceptance that you bring to the table that just puts everybody at ease. And you're also fun to be around. I know whenever we're going, whenever we have a family dinner, when you and Trevor are going to be there, it's, it just makes me want to go that much more. Um, and after today, I am truly honored to be able to call you my sister. And and last but not least, the man of the hour, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you might be expecting to hear some like embarrassing stories, and you would not be wrong in expecting that because they are numerous. <laughs> but I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Um, I will, however, proceed with caution because we don't want anybody's head getting bigger than it already is. <laughs> you know, Chelsea is the oldest and I'm the middle and Trevor's the youngest and I can't tell you how many memes and gifts and videos that we've, we've gotten about how the youngest is the coolest, the youngest is the funniest, the youngest is the smartest just countless, countless memes and GIFs and videos. The list goes on about all the, the character traits about how the youngest is just the best. Um, and we, do, we get a good kick out of them. Like, they're, they're funny. And I think that they are funny because they're kind of true. <laughs> yeah, like, tr he is funny. He is smart. He is popular. He's good looking. Um, he, it seems like he's, <laughs> a little bit taller, a little bit taller, yes, it is true. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, 
Trevor had, he's inherited all of the best qualities from our parents. And, uh, you know, you can, you can really see our parents in Trevor a lot. Like, for instance, our dad. Like, you can't take Trevor anywhere without, like, the most random places. You can't take him anywhere without him running into somebody that he knows. You know, he's a, he's a social butterfly, and, and that was very similar to our dad. Um, or like our mom, neither my mom or Trevor can eat a meal without getting half of it all over their face. <laughs> like I'm talking food on the forehead type stuff. And if you don't believe me, you can go check where he's sitting. He's got food everywhere. Uh, but he's like both of our parents in the sense that he is always there for you. you know, whatever you need, whenever you need it, you can always count on Trevor. Um, but the biggest quality that Trevor has, and the best in my opinion, is one that even as your, again, believe it or not, older brother, even as your older brother, I look up to you. And it is one that brings me back to the story that I told at the beginning. Um, on the surface, you might hear that story and think that you know, Trevor is a jokester or he was just, you know, trying to be funny or whatever. But there's, there's a certain authenticity and sincerity to his character um, that he displayed that day and that he displays all the time. And you can, you can see that no matter what, he is 100% his true self, 100% of the time without any social pressure. And that is honestly the, the biggest compliment that I can give because it's not just about being able to be yourself, it's about who that person is, right? And it, to be the type of person that Trevor is and to be able to express it fully is something that does not go unnoticed and is something that should not be taken for granted. Um, You know, Trevor is, he's funny and friendly, he's poised and composed, he's kind and caring. He is just an overall good-hearted person. And you have grown into, by every definition, or by every possible definition of the word, a successful man. And today, you have married your perfect counterpart in Emmy, who possesses all those same qualities. I love you both. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. Thanks, Robbie. That was quite the speech. A word of advice for the rest of our speakers tonight. Let's try to keep these speeches to the length we, we all wish the bridesmaids were wearing tonight. Short and to the point. But, Robbie, that's a tough act to follow. Up next is one of Trevor's groomsmen. So, Kurji, can you come on down? Thank you. First things first. Double one. <laughs> All right. It's going to be tough to follow that. Hello and good evening, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Zahid. I've been friends with Trevor for over 15 years. We were both young, dumb, about 60 pounds lighter, <laughs> but still handsome. All kidding aside, I couldn't be happier to be here, a part of your special day. As part of my research, I discovered that according to tradition, 
I'm supposed to sing the groom's praises and tell you all about his good attributes. I, uh... <laughs> I don't think I can do that today. <laughs> I don't sing and I can't lie, especially to Gia. <laughs> But since this is for one of my dear friends, Bernsey, I will try my best. With that being said, I will start with one word, Kaylee's. For those of you who don't know, Trevor was our little hyphy boy. <laughs> he is the guy who literally knew everyone. We would skip lines wherever we went and a lot of time drinks, drink for free. Speaking of which, I want the old Trevor back. <laughs> Trevor, you were and still are the life of the party. The impact you leave on people is remarkable. From countless adventures together over the years and to places like Whistler, Big White, Tulamine, and Penticton, hashtag can man, there are tons of memories that I cannot say today, but I will cherish forever. Late night shell tourneys, movie nights in the cave with Goose, and last but not least, the light game were times I will never forget. <laughs> now, Emmy, what a stunning bride you are. Am I right or what? <laughs> Emmy, I need you to put your left hand flat on the table. Trevor, please place your hand on top of hers. Now please look at each other and enjoy this moment. Especially you, Trevor, as this will be the first and last time you will have the upper hand. <laughs> now, Emmy, he is officially your problem now, but I will leave you a few helpful tips. Number one, make sure you do the pocket check wherever you go so he doesn't forget anything. Number two, after doing the pocket check, make sure he still hasn't forgot anything because this still does happen. Number three, never go to O'Hare's with him wearing sandals. Number four, make sure you are in charge of directions. <laughs> and last, never let him buy fireworks alone. <laughs> Trust me on that one. What's up? <laughs> Trevor, my advice to you is definitely cliche, but happy wife, happy life. <laughs> also, I would like to give a big thank you to Jita, Mark and Chris for having us here to celebrate Trevor and Emmy's special day. You guys are the real MVPs for putting up with these two. <laughs> also, Mark had mentioned to me a couple weeks ago to get my liver ready for tonight. So Mark, I'll see you at the bar after this. <laughs> now, if everyone could please raise their glasses and toast to the perfect couple to a long life together, filled with happiness, adventure, and lots of wonderful memories. Love you both. All right. Good evening, everyone. So I just wanted to first start off by saying, Robbie, Leland, Brian, Thomas, Kurji, you guys look amazing, very handsome. The rest are our husbands. <laughs> we compliment them every day, right? <laughs> so my name is Kimmy. I am the second oldest. I am one of Emmy's sisters. And for those that don't know us, there are four girls in our family, yes. Very lucky dad. And I'm joined by my other two sisters, as well as our cousin, Carly. And yes, Emmy is the youngest of the four. So when we thought about what we wanted to talk about today, we thought, oh man, there are so many good stories of Emmy. So many. And when we started to go through them, we realized, wow, we had such a different childhood than our sister, Emmy. 
And it is because there was a 10-year age difference between Ryoko and Emmy. So we just thought we, we would share some of those memories <laughs> with each of you. And so in particular, I wanted to share my first memory of Emmy. I was eight. We were sitting around the kitchen table having dinner. And my parents said, we have some very exciting news for you. And I thought, yes, we are going to Disneyland. <laughs> No, it turns out we were having another sister. <laughs> I eventually got over my disappointment. And Emmy, you are the apple of my mom and dad's eye. <laughs> no, 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 you don't understand. I mean, literally, my mom said to us, Emmy is the apple of my eye. <laughs> So let me bring that statement to life a little bit. So collectively, between my sisters and I, we have, we have broken six bones and cracked a skull. Auntie Tracy and Uncle Sean, you remember that time you were babysitting? <laughs> not your fault, not your fault, not your fault. But so collectively, we had broken six bones as kids. My mom never shed a tear, not worried at all. Emmy, on the other hand, she broke one bone, her arm, when she was about grade seven, preteen. And all I remember was my, so that was the first time we saw my mom cry. <laughs> all I remember my mom saying is, she will never be the same. <laughs> she will never heal. She was so distraught. But in all seriousness, Em, obviously we love you. We couldn't imagine our life and family without you. And we're so happy to welcome Trevor to our family. <laughs> okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryoko, and I am Emmy's oldest sister. Um, if you know my family, you probably know that Emmy was my parents' last attempt at trying for that coveted boy. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, but now that you finally have a couple of grandsons, I think we can all agree that there's a reason why you didn't have boys. <laughs> Instead, we were graced with Emmy, the happy, easygoing, always tall for her age, fourth daughter of the family. And as Kimmy said, um, there always was such an age gap between my sisters and I with Emmy, and even though we come from the same family, we feel like we have lived very different childhoods with, um, let's call them different perks, okay? <laughs> now, if you live in Richmond, you might see Emmy from time to time. She lives in Steveston and teaches at Walter Lee Elementary. <laughs> You might even see her cruising around town in her blue SUV. <laughs> what you may not know is that Emmy magically was inherited this vehicle somewhere along the line. In fact, not only did she end up with my parents' old SUV, who knew that this specific vehicle came with a lifetime warranty at, as my dad likes to call it, Canadian tires. <laughs> And a full-time mechanic, a.k.a. Mark Nomura. <laughs> speaking of Emmy, uh, speaking of cars, Emmy, I, I do worry a little bit up about you upgrading to a nicer vehicle one day. Uh, given your track record of late-night trips home after a big night out. <laughs> you see, after a big night out of partying, Emmy turns into what you might call a stage five puker. <laughs> At my wedding 10 years ago, Emmy decided to give me one last wedding present on her ride home. <laughs> when she casually rolled down the window and got sick all over the side of our limo <laughs> that we were traveling home in. And when the limo arrived at my parents' house to drop everyone off, Mariko, of course, was tasked with the job of cleaning it all off. <laughs> 
skip ahead a few years to when Emmy was, or sorry, when Kimmy was having her stay get, and my dad picked us up after a night out downtown. Emmy quickly claimed the front seat and again tried to casually roll down the window because she was starting to feel sick. This time, however, she wasn't quite as elegant in her approach and the wind was really not working with her that night. Since they were driving on a highway, my dad thought it was strange she was rolling down the window and gave her a classic, Jesus, M, roll up the window. <laughs> and as they, she did, they discovered smeared puke all over the side of the window as it came back up, and Mariko discovered splattered puke all over her jacket in the back seat behind her. Poor Mariko, I know. All joking aside, Em, I am so proud to be up here with you tonight. You and Trevor have a great partnership, and I know that you will create an amazing life together. I am so thankful to be your oldest sister and that we share the special bond of never being a middle child. Hi, everyone. My name is Mariko. Yes, the one who was puked on. I am Emmy's third sister, and if you ask me, yeah, I would probably say her oldest, her favorite oldest sister. So Emmy and I are six years apart, and I thought we had lived pretty similar lives until we started reading, writing this speech, and I'm starting to see things a little more clearly now. <laughs> Emmy always got the red carpet treatment, <laughs> being put under to have her wisdom de teeth done, direct first-class flights from Vancouver to Georgia while I had to take the bus. <laughs> and let's be honest, Em, Mum would have never forgotten you at a shopping centre. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy and I both grew up playing sports, volleyball and softball mainly. We spent our summer days pumping out yogurts and scooping ice cream cones. Then we would meet at the field to play slow pitch, and of course, slow pitch always led to a few drinks. I will never forget this one time at a slow pitch wind up when I was being talked into doing a keg stand and the guys that were doing it told me, oh, don't worry, there's some girl that's fallen twice and she keeps coming back for more. And I, and I knew right away, yeah, that's Emmy. <laughs> Emmy, your laid-back demeanor and social personality are great qualities that have allowed you to build the friendships you have over the years. Although you don't fall for the I'll time you trick anymore when I want you to do something for me. You are always up for having some fun. Fast forward to another slow pitch wind-up and after a few more drinks. Emmy hopped on the back of a Vespa scooter with me. Despite almost crashing into a tree, we still have a picture of Emmy, hands up in the air, having the time of her life as if she was riding a roller coaster. <laughs> Emmy, I'm very grateful you are my sister. Not many people could have handled having three older sisters. I love that I can still come over and borrow your clothes, nag you nonstop about a problem that's bothering me, and call you up to go play any sport together. You are definitely my favorite younger sister. <laughs> And honestly, without you being born, the competition of who can drive a ball, golf ball the furthest out of all of us sisters would have been pretty boring. <laughs> and for that, I'm very thankful. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Carly, not a sister. I don't think Mark could have handled another, especially me. I'm Emmy's cousin. Don't worry, Em, I'll be a lot nicer than your sisters. Our entire family has been waiting for this day. Not just because of the pandemic delay, but literally since she was born. The big celebration of the youngest and my personal favorite of the Oko sisters. Don't tell your much older sisters, Emmy. <laughs> but you've always been my favorite. If we're being honest, you're everyone's favorite. Clearly, even your parents. <laughs> being a favorite just comes with the territory of being the youngest child. It's a youngest child thing. I've always had a soft spot for you, knowing that we bond over the struggles of, that comes with being the youngest child. 
Sure, people always say that rules don't apply with us. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of people here that are a little bitter about youngest children. <laughs> Put up your hands if you are not a youngest child. <laughs> No? Okay, put up your hands if you are a youngest child. Hey, yo! Yeah. Trust me, we will have a good dance later. The youngest children will bond. Okay, so let's get back to this. Okay, everyone thinks we get away with murder. Like when you polished off that bottle of vodka and hit it down the side of your bed. And somehow, these three got trouble for it. <laughs> I laughed a lot when that happened. <laughs> and fine, your siblings think you got car and cash and unlimited credit cards. But what they don't understand is that that's a small payoff for all the duties associated with being the youngest child. I mean, us youngest siblings have to live through all the dumb mistakes of our older siblings <laughs> and watch them have all the fun. And then when it's our turn to be irresponsible fools, all of a sudden these same siblings all of a sudden become responsible. And they decide to come up with these rules and poof, we all of a sudden have parents, multiple parents, bossing us around. And then definitely they never sacrifice us to the real parents to break the rules of any bad news or even get them from some of that free cash or credit cards. But hey, we learned the skill of negotiation at a young age. You may have had it rough as the youngest child am, but those life lessons bestowed upon you from your much older siblings, and shall we, shall we say wiser, have led to you to where you are today, with the best lifelong partner anyone could ask for. And why is that? Because he too has walked the life path of experiencing the youngest child. <laughs> we all knew they saved the best, best for last with you, M. They hit perfection. You were wise beyond your years, and you were so considerate and kind, and you tracked amazing people, which is evident by who you married today and by those who are surrounded here. Only you and Trevor could have had a wedding party of 18 people. <laughs> Keep being the life of the party, Em, and I'm always here to help you navigate that tough life path of being the youngest child. Love you. So in closing, we just wanted to ask everyone if they could do something really quick for Emmy and Trevor. So we're just going to ask everyone just to close their eyes just for a moment. So just close your eyes if you feel comfortable, Emmy and Trevor too. And with your eyes closed and to yourself, we just invite you to send a wish of wellness or words of love to the newlyweds. Amazing. You can open your eyes now. So let's raise our glass to Emmy and Trevor to the beautiful bride and groom. Cheers. 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 Yeah, it was good. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chelsea, and as uh, everyone said, I'm Trevor's older sister. And uh, I am so thrilled to be here today. I'm just so happy that we finally, this day has finally arrived. It couldn't have happened on a more beautiful day in March, and that it happened in exactly the way that Trevor and Emmy had always hoped and envisioned for. When Trevor initially asked me to speak at his wedding, I must admit I was elated. Um, anyone that knows Trevor knows that there are countless funny stories and jokes that can be made about Trevor. And so after he asked me, I spent the next year or so um, keeping a running list in my phone of various jokes and quirks and tidbits that I was hoping I would be able to share with you today um, so that we could all have a great laugh at Trevor's expense. 
<laughs> but uh, to my great disappointment, and uh, likely yours, uh, Trevor recently asked me not to roast him on his wedding day. <laughs> So, <laughs> so Trevor, you're welcome. I have mostly restrained here. Um, as we all know, Trevor is a pretty fantastic human. <laughs> there are a lot of very special qualities about him that I would bet that all of us would agree on. Trevor has a presence. He is kind. He is charismatic. He has a big, warm, inclusive personality. He is the kind of guy that leaves you feeling special when he runs into you somewhere as though you have made, him, have made his day. He gives the best hugs. He's, <laughs> he's thoughtful, he's helpful, and he's very generous, especially when he has Jita's credit card. <laughs> He's smart, he's inquisitive, he's hardworking, and on occasion it has been known that Trevor can, has completed a task without getting distracted. <laughs> he is the life of every party, and he is someone that will take it upon himself to ensure that everybody is having a great time and that nobody's glass gets empty. He is the kind of person that puts everyone else's needs ahead of his own, and he doesn't take anything too seriously. He loves dogs, he loves people, and he loves his family. And he has this one-of-a-kind one laugh, one that you can uh, hear from across just about any room, and one that I would argue is something only his mother could love. <laughs> But with today being Trevor's very special day, or Trevor and Emmy's very special day, sorry, <laughs> I thought I would take this opportunity to tell you about some of the qualities about Trevor you may not know. <laughs> so Trevor is a fiercely loyal person. He's the kind of guy that will always have your back. He's a defender. He makes a great teammate. And growing up, I think Trevor was pretty much captain of every team he ever played on. And as his sibling, this meant that as we were growing up, anytime we ever got in an argument with our, with our mom, Trevor was someone that always quickly took your side. At the same time, Trevor is extremely honest. And so after getting in one of these said fights, Trevor would be very quick to come and tell you just how much in the wrong you are. <laughs> Trevor is also my most honest critic, something that I like to chalk up as being a perk of being Trevor's sister. <laughs> Trevor can also be stubborn, strongly opinionated, and competitive. So basically the textbook version of being a Burns. <laughs> um, my brothers and I can literally make a competition out of anything. We uh, get in very heated debates um, and arguments at the dinner table and have honestly argued over who has traveled to the most countries, um, who is the best athlete, um, who knows the lower ma mainland the best, and who is the worst driver. <laughs> and for anyone that is curious, the answer to all of these questions is Robbie. <laughs> and if we all... <laughs> who I must say is probably fuming right now that I just publicly outed him that he is the worst driver. <laughs> um, as an extrovert, relationships matter a lot to Trevor. He's dependable, he's reliable, and he is never more than a phone call away. He's someone that always goes the extra mile. He's the kind of brother who has literally hung up the phone for me, with me, gotten in his car, driven to my house just to give me a hug. He is, Trevor is the guy that cries when he holds your newborn for the very first time. The kind of uncle who celebrates each of your kids' milestones 
decorates his office with their photos and speaks about them as if they were his own. Trevor also has impeccable taste, which leads us to Emmy. <laughs> Emmy, you have been such a wonderful addition to our family. You are truly as beautiful on the inside as you are on the out. You're kind, caring, and strong. And like Trevor, you love with your whole heart. Before you, before you I'm sure we all could agree that Trevor was special. <laughs> but you have brought out a calmness, a grounding, and a more mature side of Trevor. You are a supportive and patient partner, and you even turn a blind eye to the extremely messy way in which he eats. <laughs> I love how the two of you choose to do everything together, and, that, uh, and how, Emmy, you keep Trevor in his place by also being a fierce competitor, whether you two are playing tennis or golf or having drinks at the bar. In all seriousness, you two complement each other so well. You love your families, you bring out each other's best qualities, and you are each other's best friends. I'd like to say that we are thrilled to welcome you to our family, but the truth of the matter is you've been part of our family for a very long time now. <laughs> Trevor, I am so, so proud of the man that you've become. As, a, as the big sister that has always wanted to protect you, guide you, and lead by example, I am so honored to stand here today, today and speak to your heart of gold. And to tell your friends and family just how much you've actually been the one that inspires me, someone that I admire, and someone that I know will make the very best husband and one day the very best father. I am so thankful for our closeness. And not only have you always been one of my favorite people on the planet, but you have also brought in someone else into my life that heads that list. I love you. To Trevor and Emmy. There was to be Emmy's other aunt, my sister, Auntie Nora, up here with me today for this bridal toast. Unfortunately, she was not able to be here tonight. However, we are going to link up with FaceTime, and she will be joining us. So please. So please be patient as we work our way through this. Nor, please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm very disappointed that I cannot be there in person, really missing every one of you. Trevor and Emmy, congratulations and much love to you both. Emmy, we first want to thank you for this very special honor and Kath, you can continue. <laughs> we now wish to share our thoughts about Emmy with this poem. Don't worry, Emmy, it's not a burn. <laughs> By the way, Emmy, neither one of us is a poet. You and everyone else will soon know it. Emmy is the youngest of four Gurdjieff, Gur oh, pardon me. <laughs> Stop drinking, Nora. I haven't even Nor. had a drink yet, I've been waiting. <laughs> Told her not to drink, but. I, I wasn't allowed to drink, but I am going to drink after this. Oh, yes, I think so. I have a bottle waiting, so. <laughs> Get back on track, dear. Okay. <laughs> I'm also the youngest child. <laughs> That's not an excuse to be drunk right now. <laughs> and my three siblings are all much, 
much older than me as well, Emmy. Can we get back on track, Nora? Okay, so, sorry. Thank you. I feel like I was actually at, at the reception, so be patient. The MC said we have a time limit, Nora. Okay, all right, let's go. Emmy is the youngest of four gorgeous daughters whose family has always enjoyed Hawaii's waters. Emmy is respected for all she has done being kind and fair, and including everyone. Softball and cosm hockey are some of her sports. Talented and sportsmanlike, and never out of sorts. Her grade two, three students are thrilled she is teaching. Her dedication and influence are so far reaching. Together with her sisters and brothers-in-law, they are thick as thieves, one and all. At times, some may claim Emmy is the favored daughter, but only Mark and Chris really know what they bought her. A caring and loyal friend. She is a true Nomura girl, right to the end. Some may say we can be a bit saucy, but lucky for you, Trevor, she is never bossy. <laughs> At this time, please raise your glass as we offer our toast. Back to you, Nora. Emmy, this day of celebration has finally arrived. Your patience with this pandemic has clearly survived. Sees life with Trevor and its amazing returns. Here's to you, Emmy, as the newest Mrs. Burns. To Emmy. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Okay, thanks to my uh, sisters for that nice speech. Isn't technology awesome? My wife, Chris, suggested that we put Noreen in a hazmat suit so she could attend, but uh, that's off the table. I also see that uh, they didn't allow my older brother, Dan, to get up here and hold the mic this time. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Caitlin and Punky, for the great job you're doing on emceeing this event. Uh, very much appreciated. Yeah. Anyways, hello, my name is Mark Nomura, and I'm a very, very lucky father of the bride. My wife, Chris, and I would like to welcome all of you to this very special occasion on the marriage of Trevor and Emmy. After a number of planned wedding day cancellations due to COVID, we have finally been able to celebrate today. Like my other daughter's weddings, Emmy has only given me a few minutes to speak. <laughs> also, Caitlin has got the timer on me. I would have loved to have given a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> to go over all of the number of unbelievable stories, but given the time, that was a hard no by Emmy. <laughs> to those of you who are not familiar with our family, and I think you are familiar, everybody's talked about it, but Emmy is the youngest of four girls. Yes, I have been blessed and they all remind me of this each and every day. <laughs> all I can say is, four down, and I'm done. <laughs> okay, uh, Emmy has asked me not to roast her, but to only talk about really good quality things about her. Well, the hell with that. Let's, uh... <laughs> okay, Emmy being the youngest with her eldest daughter, 
uh, sorry, eldest sister being 10 years older, she has always been the one that was always under the radar. And I think all the sisters would agree, also the most spoiled. <laughs> How would I describe Emmy? Well, she's very social, kind, and somewhat a quiet person in her own way. She has always reminded me, Dad, I am your favorite daughter, right? <laughs> she also said, so when I get married, I'm going to have gold plates at my wedding reception. <laughs> well, I am. Sorry, but I ran out of money. <laughs> and that's because of all the previous weddings. So therefore, these white plates will have to do tonight. <laughs> As most of you are aware, uh, we are a softball family, right? <laughs> Emmy uh, and her other sisters all played uh, for Richmond. Both Mariko and Emmy spent time in Georgia on ball scholarships. But seriously, we are all very proud of her and the fine young woman that she has become, and now as a, a teacher. Uh, so we're very, very proud of her. Now let's move on to Trevor. Trevor, Trevor. Okay, I hand over the reins of responsibility of looking after Emmy to you. Trevor, some very important highlights I want to point out. Welcome to my boys club. You are member number eight. <laughs> I can add marketing and IT skills to the club. <laughs> now, no one can tell me to keep the toilet seat down. We are officially empty nesters. There is no return policy. <laughs> Emmy's room at our house has been rented out. And guess what? You can get her the gold plates that she wants. <laughs> okay, and one interesting thing that Jeremy, uh, my son-in-law, reminded me of. And of course, Jer Jeremy has all the good ideas. Without him, I'd be lost. But he asked me to make sure I get my gold credit card back from you. <laughs> Emmy, I'm sure Trevor has a couple he can give to you. <laughs> Finally, officially, today, Bobo has legitimate mother and father. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Trevor, our whole family, including our large extended family, welcomes you to the Nomura clan. To Mama G and Jita, thank you for raising such a fine young man. To Chelsea, Thomas, Noah, Oakland, baby Hannah, and Robbie, welcome to our family, and thank you. For all your support in welcoming Emmy to your very close-knit family. We could not be more happier as we celebrate Trevor and Emmy's special day. I know that Robbie Sr. is smiling from above. To Emmy and Trevor, life is a fine balancing act. There will be ups and downs. Support each other as you travel down the road of life and marriage. We are all here for you two. Remember, I live by two basic principles. <laughs> what? Okay. A, do not take more than you can give. And B, what mine is hers, and what's hers is hers, okay? <laughs> Be happy. Congratulations to the both of you. We love you both. <laughs> to the wedding party, wow. One of the largest number of bridesmaids and groomsmen I've ever seen at a wedding party. Wow, that's all I can say. <laughs> the bridesmaid absolutely looked beautifully.
beautiful and stunning, and the groomsmen, very dapper and handsome. To all the guests, thank you, thank you for attending. Please be safe, healthy, and mighty as we navigate through COVID. Can you all raise your glass to toast the wedding party? Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Amazing. Uh, appreciate every single one of you. I wouldn't imagine this day without all of you standing next to us, so thank you. Your family did a great job with not roasting you, so it was really <laughs> nice. <laughs> thank you to everyone for celebrating with us today. We got engaged 886 days ago and had to postpone our wedding two, almost three times. We're so fortunate to be able to enjoy this day in person with all of you. Uh, uh, first, I'd just say thanks to all the vendors. You guys were all great throughout the pandemic. Um, everything was super smooth. We barely got dinged, so it was great. Um, <laughs> Uh, Red's food is great. Uh, Emma and Christina, thanks for putting up with us. Christina, if you're still here, thank you for putting up with us at my mom's house. I, I know we're a headache. Um, the Boathouse, you guys moved our dates like two, almost three times without a hesitation or any problems, so thank you. Um, Timeless Tree, we're looking forward to the, the footage that you guys are going to be doing for us. I actually won an Instagram contest, that's why they're here. Um, <laughs> And to my cousin's company, Dania, thanks for Perfect Party Services for stepping up. I had some bartenders follow up last minute, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. Katie Keeney, thank Woo. you so much for all of the help that you've done for us today, honestly, to make it run smoothly. Um, Jason Bo. DJ Bo. <laughs> One of my old elementary school friends who is here being our DJ today. Thank you so much for helping us dance the night away. Love you. Punky and Caitlin, thank you. Uh, you guys are doing an incredible job. I've emceed a few weddings, and you guys put me to shame. Um, I especially want to say a huge thank you to Caitlin. What a lot of people don't know is that I didn't have a wedding planner to start this thing out. Caitlin, being a former wedding planner, knew that and said about a month ago, Trevor, I'm taking everything over. <laughs> so without her, this day wouldn't be what it is. So thank you very much for everything you've done for me. <laughs> Emmy did mention earlier that uh, in the middle of February, we actually didn't know if we were gonna have this wedding. We thought that it was gonna get pushed again to May. But thankfully, the Bon Bon released her restrictions. <laughs> And uh, she eased up and we were able to have a, the wedding that we always dreamed of. No mass and lots of dancing. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> who would have thought that the guy who was pouring my beers at the local pub would be standing here beside me on my wedding day? Makes sense why my beers were free. Thank God Grant's not here. <laughs> I want to extend my gratitude to the Burns family. Thank you for taking me in with open arms. I'll never forget the first time I went to the Burns house for the dinner, the first dinner. Trevor was so nervous. So nervous. Especially for me to meet his mom. But after an amazing dinner, many drinks with Thomas and Robbie, <laughs> and eating Chelsea's delicious desserts, and playing with Noah, it was the first of many great dinners together. I couldn't imagine a better mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and brother-in-laws. Here's so many more memories together. Cheers, guys. Uh, I first need to acknowledge one person who's very important in my life, and that's my mother. You are the... I am who I am today because of you, and I wouldn't be standing here if you haven't done everything you have for me. So, thank you. I, I have more, but I'm not going to say it, because I'll cry more. <laughs> um, <sighs> Her and my dad gave me and my siblings a carefree life 
that any kid would be lucky to have. And we are so blessed to have everything we have because of them. You know, when you're younger, you go through a stage in your life where you don't want to hang out with your parents. You don't want to see them. You don't want to be with them. And it's not until you grow up that you really begin to appreciate them. So I love you, Mom. I really do. And one thing I'll say to all of you who have your parents is love your parents. We are so busy growing up, we often forget that they are also growing old. Uh, so again, I love you, Mom. Uh, to the Nomura family, you guys are a hell of a time. Uh, I'm gonna tell, I'll tell a little story about the first time I met the Nomura family. I was dating Emmy for maybe two weeks. And she says, hey, like, let's go to Surrey and you can meet my family. I said, okay, sure. South Surrey. South, South Surrey. Morgan Crossing. Let's go to South Surrey and meet my family. So I say, okay, sure, we'll, we'll go meet your family. So we, we get there and we go to my shanty. And I'm sitting there, I'm meeting everyone, and all of a sudden there's a baby reveal. And somebody announces that they're pregnant. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my God. And so, okay, sure, like, that's a, that's a pretty exciting thing. And then we go to Mariko's house and, do you guys want to watch the wedding video for the first time? So we watch Mariko's wedding video for the first time. And then thankfully, we laughed before they showed the birthing video. But anyways, that was the first time I met the family and that's when I knew, I was like, these guys, they're keepers. Um, so thank you for the Nomura family for accepting me with open arms and the brother-in-laws. Boys. It's official. So are we getting our Nomura tattoos or? Um, but Mark and Chris, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. You're incredible people and I admire the way you guys love each other and I look forward to spending the rest of our lives with you guys. You guys did raise an incredible daughter. I mean, she picked me, so. <laughs> um, and the last thing I'll say is, when you start planning a wedding, as Caitlin alluded to earlier, you have this massive guest list. <laughs> and you think about all these people that you want at your wedding. But when you break it down, it's, it's not about the people that you want there. It's about the people that you can't imagine that day without. And I couldn't imagine this day without all of you. Oh. So thank you very much. And thanks for coming today, and let's raise one more glass, and then we can dance. And cheers to us. <laughs>